Welcome back to Science Click. Today, supersymmetry. What is a symmetry? A symmetry is a transformation that does not affect an object. A sphere is symmetric under rotations. A butterfly under reflections. A grid under translations. Identifying the symmetries of an object helps understand its geometric structure. Our universe has symmetries too. The laws of nature do not change after certain transformations. For instance, physics does not change from one point to another. The universe is symmetric under translations. Another example, if we carry out an experiment in one direction, the result is the same as in another direction. The universe is symmetric under rotations. By identifying more and more complex symmetries, physicists have refined our understanding of the world. But have we identified every symmetry of the universe? Are there any new ones to discover? Perhaps? Supersymmetry is precisely a new kind of symmetry which we have never observed so far. Let's quickly review our current models. Nowadays, the universe is described as a block, space-time, in which particles evolve. There are two families of particles, which we classify in the standard model. Fermions, which constitute matter, and bosons, which mediate interactions. Supersymmetry postulates that the standard model is incomplete, that there are other particles we've never seen before. Each standard particle would have a superpartner in the other category, such that there would be a new boson for each fermion, and a new fermion for each boson. The fermions, electron, quarks, neutrinos, would each have a boson partner, selectron, squarks, neutrinos. While bosons, photon, gluon, Z, W, Higgs, would each have a fermion partner, photino, gluino, xeno, wino, higgsino. Supersymmetry is the hypothetical symmetry between particles of matter and interaction. Researchers are interested in this hypothesis because it could solve many mysteries. By adding new particles, supersymmetry offers promising candidates to explain the nature of dark matter, this invisible mass whose composition remains a puzzle. Another example, it is believed that at the Big Bang, 13 billion years ago, electromagnetism, the strong and the weak interactions, three fundamental interactions of the universe, were merged together. Nowadays, these interactions have different intensities, but winding back the clock to the Big Bang, the three forces should converge. This is grand unification, an idea that could lead to a theory of everything. Unfortunately, the standard model calculations seem to indicate that the curves miss each other. By adding supersymmetry, the calculations now predict that the curves meet, in accordance with grand unification. But why do physicists focus mainly on supersymmetry? One might think that other symmetries are just as interesting to study. In reality, only supersymmetry seems to be a reasonable hypothesis. To understand, we will have to go back to our current models. On the one hand, the fabric of the universe is described as an immense grid, space-time. Space-time has symmetries, its laws are invariant. From point to point, orientation to orientation, moment to moment, and from an inertial frame to another. Space-time obeys these four symmetries, which are called Poincaré symmetries. They are the symmetries of special relativity. On the other hand, the universe is filled with particles, described as disturbances within quantum fields. 
there is one quantum field for each type of particle, a field for electrons, a field for photons, and so on. These quantum fields are mathematical fluids that fill all space. The Higgs field is made up of numbers. The fields of the other bosons are made up of vectors. And the fields of fermions are made up of spinners. Weird mathematical objects which describe this type of particle very well. These three types of fields are distinguished by a property called spin. Spin 0 and 1 for bosons and a half for fermions. Spin is directly related to which mathematical objects make up these quantum fields. To understand the core of supersymmetry, we first need a technical aside. The quantum fields of bosons are described by numbers, or vectors of numbers. In the world of numbers, multiplication is commutative. If we take two numbers like 3 and 5, 3 times 5 equals 15, and so does 5 times 3. More generally, x times y equals y times x. However, spinners, which describe fermions, are not made up of ordinary numbers, but of weirder objects called Grassmann numbers. Despite their name, these Grassmann numbers are not really numbers. They are abstract mathematical tools. In the world of Grassmann numbers, a times b is equal to minus b times a. Grassmann numbers are anti-commutative. In consequence, the square of a Grassmann number is always zero. This is a very strange property, which obviously does not hold with ordinary numbers. But we can construct such abstract objects within the world of mathematics, and they turn out to be very useful to describe particles of matter. This difference between ordinary numbers and Grassmann numbers fundamentally distinguishes fermions from bosons. We can multiply an ordinary number by itself, which implies that two identical bosons can be put in the same place at the same time. But we can't do the same thing with two fermions, because it's impossible to multiply a Grassmann number by itself. This always gives zero. This is the Pauli exclusion principle. Two fermions cannot be simultaneously in a same state. This explains why we do not fall through our chairs. Electrons cannot pass through each other. Let's close the parenthesis and come back to symmetries. We have seen that space-time obeys four symmetries, the Poincaré symmetries. However, some quantum fields also have symmetries. Quarks, for instance, come in three versions, red, green and blue, which are interchangeable. This is an internal symmetry within the quark fields. Another example. The fields of charged particles, such as electrons, are invariant when we alter the phase of complex numbers. This is another example of a symmetry internal to these quantum fields. In 1967, the physicists Coleman and Mandula proved mathematically that the universe cannot obey any other type of symmetry. The only types of symmetries allowed are those of Poincaré, from space-time, and the internal symmetries specific to each quantum field. The theorem forbids any other type of symmetry. However, in 1971, Golfin and Lichtmann discovered a loophole. The Coleman-Mandula theorem is based on an assumption. It assumes that all symmetries are quantified by numbers. To bypass this assumption, Golfan and Lichtmann imagined a new kind of symmetry, which would be described not by numbers, but by Grassmann numbers. In this case, the Coleman-Mandula theorem does not apply. It does not forbid such a symmetry. This is supersymmetry. In our current models, it is thought to be the only possible extension to the types of symmetries we already know. 
An intuitive way to visualize supersymmetry is to imagine that space-time is split into two copies, one made of numbers, the other made of Grassmann numbers. One is the world of bosons, the other of fermions. Supersymmetry is the idea of a translational symmetry from one space-time to the other, a translation which interchanges numbers and Grassmann numbers, bosons and fermions. This is not just a pretty picture, we call this superspace. We can describe the universe as two complementary spaces, one for numbers, the other for Grassmann numbers and each quantum field would fill up this whole superspace, such that each particle has a partner in the other category. It is an abstract construction, but a powerful tool to describe supersymmetry. When it was theorized, it was hoped that supersymmetry could solve a crucial problem, the mass of the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson interacts with virtual particles of the quantum vacuum, and according to calculations, all these interactions should make it very heavy. However, in reality, it seems much lighter. Supersymmetry was supposed to provide a solution to this problem. By adding superparticles, the quantum vacuum would be filled with as many fermions as bosons, and their contributions being opposite, they would cancel each other out. Unfortunately, for this explanation to work, partner particles must have a similar mass, as their contributions should balance out. But at the moment, no superpartner has yet been detected, which indicates that if they do exist, the superpartners are necessarily more massive than we thought, otherwise we would have detected them. In other words, our universe does not seem to obey supersymmetry, at least not in its most exact form. Supersymmetric particles might exist, but they would necessarily have a higher mass than their partners. Researchers wonder whether the universe obeyed supersymmetry in its first moments, just after the Big Bang, and then broke it as it cooled down. To sum up, after decades of research, supersymmetry remains a hypothesis of which we know that it is not valid in its most ideal form. But it's still a crucial research topic, as it is probably the only new symmetry that our current models do not forbid. Supersymmetry introduces a duality between bosons and fermions, which could solve many mysteries, and whose mathematical formalism has helped several other fields along. Supersymmetry is not a theory, it is just a kind of symmetry that the universe may or may not have. Several models use supersymmetry, and by putting it to the test experimentally, we can restrict these models and refine our research. It is notably used in superstring theory, one of the most promising approaches to unifying general relativity and quantum physics. Particles are described as tiny vibrating strings which would have a supersymmetry along their surface. It is also the basis for supergravity, a model that combines supersymmetry and general relativity, and predicts a superpartner for the graviton, the particle of gravity, the gravitino. Finally, we can build models of universes with multiple supersymmetries. But there is a limit to the number of symmetries we can add we talk of maximal supergravity. In such a model, if space-time had 11 dimensions, all constants of the universe turn out to be determined solely by its symmetries. This is a model that was discovered in France during the 1970s. The quantum version of this model, proposed by Witten in 1995, could unify all versions of string theory. This is M-theory.